Hello again, everybody. Today I want to talk about two basic, uh, very common styles of uh, support, support method. And um, as we know, the Italians call it appoggio. Appoggiare means to lean. And uh, there are other names for it, breath support and whatever. But today I want to talk about put it in a certain perspective. Uh, if you take karate, you do everything with muscles, and somebody attacks you, and you guard and hit back with muscles, and stand there and absorb big hits, and that's called hard style because you're using muscles to defend yourself and to also uh, hopefully uh, defeat your opponent. Soft style means that if your opponent throws a punch at you, you just yield all the time. You go soft. You you flop. Somebody said like a rag doll. You 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 break at the waist, and fall like that, right? So the whole idea is you, that they can't hit you hard because you're always soft and always yielding. And when you, when you uh, want to throw a punch yourself, you have to use centrifugal force. You have to fall away and sling your arm and do that, sling the arm up. And uh, you're always using weight, body weight. You lean on someone, make them deal with you, or balance or centrifugal force, some kind of slinging effect. But you don't use muscles to achieve what's going. If you grab me on my arm right here, in hard style, I turn my hand over like that, grab your arm, and then twist your arm over like this, and then hit you in the elbow. So that's all muscular, see? Uh, if in, in a soft style, let's say a, 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 a Tai Chi is a good example. Aikido does it too. You grab my arm like this, well, I just let you pull me. And I pull you, and I weigh, I weigh 220 pounds. So I put my fall, and you put all my weight on you. And all of a sudden, you're dealing with my weight, right? And if I get in close enough, I just go, boop, and hit you on the, uh, hit you on the larynx, and the fight's over. <laughs> the idea, though, is to get use balance and coordination and body weight. And, uh, and uh, uh, you, you, really, you really do your best to absorb, to not absorb the energy of your opponent when they hit you, you fall away all the time. You fall under. You, you, you know. It's like a, they tell the ballerinas that if they want their arms to go up, don't just lift them with muscles, but but fill them with helium and let them float. And that way they can stay up much much longer. And it's uh, it, it's it, in, in if you were karate, it would be called a soft style. See, now how does that apply to singing? Well, if we apply to singing. Uh, most singers today use hard style. There are some singers of the past that were e experts at soft style, like Claudio Muzio and uh, and Tito Schipa, people like that, who who did strictly soft style singing, which I hope I can demonstrate. Now, let's start with the hard style so we can understand something. Uh, when uh, I used to have a friend who was an who was an Aikido instructor, which is all soft style, but he would not accept a pay, a, a student unless they had a hard style black belt already. Because he said it's too subtle, you can't feel anything, see? So we're going to do this. The, the, we'll do the hard style first, so just to get the idea. Now, uh, hard style, remember, means using muscles. But you now, what muscles do we use and where? <clears throat> well, the basic one, first one is, you must do something to find the correct posture of your diaphragm. So if I go something like this, let's see if you can see me on this little screen here. But if I go something like this, I go... You can see my, my stomach jumps out when I do that. Well, it only jumps so far and in such a shape and such a direction that I can actually maintain it. If I can identify it, I go... Now, I hold that posture by that and go... That's hard styling because I'm maintaining muscular action in order to keep my support very even. Also, of course, in my mind, doing this, I'm training myself from every possible angle. Um, but if you can maintain the perfection of the of of your of the of the posture of the diaphragm, everything would come out even, and you wouldn't have to worry about it. So one of these is, which it just relaxes the throat completely, and and the resistance of this causes a reaction in my diaphragm which becomes the posture that I want to use to sing with. But then I have to maintain that posture. I'm not letting it, I'm not letting it, it, it change at all. So I can sing that way. 
uh, all I want to do in Bogota, mi alieta, char da gran signore, rimedini l'amore. And the idea is to never let the posture change. I always tell everybody, if your arm is out like this, the, 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 the game we're playing or the exercise we're doing, is this isn't allowed to change its posture. And then somebody pushes down on it. Well, I have to give more energy there to keep it there. Remember, the idea is to keep the posture so I can give more energy or give less energy. And I can do that to my diaphragm. I can shoot more energy uh, when it's necessary because you get to some of the high notes and you get more resistance in your vocal cords and there's more resistance and you need to give more energy in order to maintain the same posture. The idea is to maintain the posture no matter what it takes. You give, you give more, you give less, you relax, you do things, but you never let the posture change. That's, that, that's what we're after. If I can sing that way, the idea is this must absolutely maintain its posture. Now, it sounds pretty simple, and there we have a, a series of uh, exercises we do, and to find we have a lot of them. If you, if you want to learn them all, they're all available at the, right here on this video. I hope, hope I can get them in. Uh, but this is hard styling. This is not soft styling, okay? So we go... Now, a lot of people have trouble doing that. So it is, it is, you stick your tongue out, that's slight muscular action. You keep your jaw closed, that's slight muscular action. And the result is definitely that you have to uh, use your muscles. You, it will happen, your muscles will be used just because there's resistance and your job is to maintain that. When I open my mouth, I have to not let it change. So any, any effect I want to make. I did not let this change its posture. So that is, uh, now let's say those of you who can't go, all right, you need another one. All right, let's try another one. And this one is called the lip clamp. And you press your lips as together as tight as you can. And you go, hmm, hmm. If you want to do ah, a, e, o, u inside, that's fine too. That's good. So I go, hmm, 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 hmm. Look what it's doing. Hmm, oh, oh, oh. We don't use this for resonance, okay? Some of these things will be, will be we, we will use some things for resonance, but not, not the ones that, that go, go through the nose very much. Like hung, we don't sing here. When we open, we go over the hung line. We go, no, what happens if I go, there it is again. So I go, hung, bob, bob, bob. Bob. So we want to find uh, different uh, vocalists, really, that's what there are, that, that, that produce for us the correct posture of the diaphragm. Now, when I say don't change this, that doesn't go for the back. The back's going like this. The back opens up when you breathe way down low and it closes when you're singing and it opens, it's like an accordion, right? That's not, that's not original with me, folks. That's Mr. Caruso describing exactly how to breathe in your lower back in his book. The abdomen goes in, and the lower back opens. Now, if I do that, and then I, of course, know where this is and how to use it, but they're going, ah! But those of us don't, that don't, not as familiar with it, we need little exercises to help us, to help us achieve this, this correct posture all the time. Now, one thing about this thing is you can move it around in different places if you want to. Let's say I want to raise it up to my sternum. So I go... And now the, um, I'm, I'm getting a reaction right here. Of course, the reaction under still goes. So the whole thing begins to react and you get so you can use any one that you want to use, right? If I do this, it's fine. If I do this, it goes, uh, someone like uh, Mario Del Monaco used this one. And he'd go, 
uh, his, his thing was, uh, 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 oh. Now, you'll notice down there something's happening. Uh, uh, there it is again. So if I do that and I maintain this posture down here, I can use this as my point of phonation. You go, ah, uh, ah, uh, not my nose. I can sing everything. It never hurts the voice. He had one of the longest careers. He died at 67 of kidney disease and gave a concert two weeks before he sang his voice. was still perfect, right? I mean, I'm 85. I sing all day long. So, so it, 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 the only thing that goes through your throat that can hurt you is air. Once it's in or out of the body, we call it breath. So breath is your enemy or breath is your best friend. If I can control the breath, it's my best friend. If, it's, if it gets away and comes up and hits me in the throat, it can wreck, literally wreck my voice on one note. And when I, when I told New York, I have this reputation of being the big healer. And uh, McCloskey Institute in Boston and places like that, whole, whole groups. Uh, uh, and I must say, uh, a lot of people, very, very famous singers, sent me people that needed help. And all it is is breath. And, you, you know, I, I like to use this exercise. I know that some of you, if you've seen the other videos, you've seen me use this one. Uh, a lot, and that's that. Just as Adinapati said, "Don't sing breathy." So I go, ba 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 ba. I try my best even on the not to leak air. And so you go, yum 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 yum. There's another one, yum 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 yum. What is doing? Yum yum. So there's no reason why you can't sing, uh, you know. By keeping this the same all the time, it allows my resonance to get up here in what they used to call the true mask, which is up here in my forehead, not down here. This is the nasal cavity. And Caruso said, never sing the nasal cavity. You can sing there, but it doesn't carry well. It blends with the orchestra, and they don't hear you very well, believe it or not. A lot of, a lot of uh, teachers uh, use the word focus. Well, focus is a disaster. You bring the voice in here and make it narrow, and, and, and the voice sounds, if you hear it at all, it's totally unimportant sound. It's got no particular value. You, you don't want to sing narrow like that. Hello, how are you? But you can sing that way. I'm cooling my nose. And by the way, this doesn't respond right either. But if I go over this hung line, I go, now it's above my nose, and this thing is working the whole time. And the fact that the muscular, that the muscles are flexed and active is why we call it hard style. Now I can move around with the hard style. I can do it like Delmonica did. Works fine. Whatever, whatever resonance position uh, that you like or someone has convinced you of, it may not be the best one you can do, but if it works for you and you're secure, I guess maybe that's better than most people. I always prefer, to, you know, as my old Russian teacher, Olga Rich, used to say, Cut off your head and throw it in waste paper basket. It's only for resonator. It does not work. It does nothing in thinking. It only resonates. So the idea is I'm supposed to sing with a with an invisible jaw and invisible tongue and invisible throat like this. Everything is loose. There's no action or anything, which means I've got to. Uh, find my coordination in my, in my, in my diaphragmatic support. That's what we're talking about. So if I breathe, I always breathe in a way that gives this uh, support. In other words, the breath, the breath moves from my back like this under pressure, and it presses. A little. They ask, uh, the, the greatest baritone who ever lived was the king of, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the few kings of Bel Canto. His name was Mattia Battistini, and he sang in... Uh, in St. Petersburg for a long career, but he's considered the greatest barrack song that ever lived. And uh, they asked him, how do you sing? He said, I press my chest. What do you press your chest with? Think about it. Let's say I'm gonna cough, I go. <coughs> but before I cough, I do this. You see, I press my breath here. <laughs> No, 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 no,
la, 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 and I don't let it change. See? The idea is to establish the posture of the diaphragm and then don't let it change. And all these little exercises that we do uh, will get you there. There's no doubt about it, right? You can just think cough and go, <coughs> now don't complete the cough, do the first half and go, and I press my breath against my diaphragm. Uh, Manuel Garcia the second, when he was teaching, he got very famous. He, he was really a sort of a, a, a fanatic about what he called miniature cough. You're not supposed to do big coughs. You're supposed to do, <coughs> like that's all. La, la, la. I can do big ones. <coughs> but is that singing or is that yelling? We have to decide. Which were maybe a few places uh, in opera where uh, maybe it's okay to yell, or maybe you should yell, because it'll, it'll, the orchestra's going fortissimo and, and, and everything is loud, and maybe you need to, you know, get bigger. But I always tried to, I'm 85, and I still sing all day, every day, and I would recommend not overdoing this with this, with this pressure. Um, I would say concentrate on beauty of tone and, and the beauty of sustaining line, your know, legato, and uh, uh, that's all healthier singing. <laughs> See, that's, uh, that, the miniature cough makes this work also. <laughs> right? Got the hard style clear now? You do something that causes a diaphragmatic posture to occur. You want to take the breath well behind you, deep down low in your back, so the breath is ready to lean forward against your diaphragm, or even if you want to use the, the cough, the miniature cough. Uh, someone like uh, Lawrence Melchior, who was, of course, a heroic tenor, the heroic tenor of all time, really, and he, he, would, he would do things ahead of the tone to get it to preset. So he'd go, hello, hello, like that. Then you maintain that. Look at it. Hello, I'm still for he's still a father. He's fendus and hicks are not. So you can pound away like crazy. Um, someone like Giovanni Martinelli used to breathe behind him and then hammer in the front. He would have this. Ah, 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 ah. So everything was hammered. Say, quite ready, yeah, be a fussy. It was always the residence, it always sounded big as a barn. And I asked him, I said, there's not much legato in there. It's, it's not for, I mean, to expect Italian singers to have legato. He said, yes, but I was hired the Metropolitan Opera to replace Mr. Caruso. And no one can be compared to Caruso. It is impossible to be Caruso. So I decided the one thing I have that was big league was had a big voice. So I sang it a way that kept my voice a big all the time, and, 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 and I sang, he sang uh, 33 years at the Metropolitan Mountain, and never had a, never had a vocal problem. <laughs> but how do I do it? If I go, ah, ah, see the minute I hammer, ah, ah, I'm getting this response. Ah, 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 ah. It's not very pretty, but you listen to him, and you know, very, very tremendous sound. And of course, he was 77 when I met him, and I was 21, and uh, he was still singing all that repertoire, and uh, it was really, really amazing. The guy was incredible. Uh, then you have Spinto singers who blow their breath out. Now I'm empty, right? So I can't, no breath is going to come out now unless I squeeze. So that squeezing act that the Italians call spingere, which is to push, they call it push. And uh, like Pablo said in Magic Class, it's here like a baby, push, you push, you push. Well, what he's describing is a spinto method. Uh, you, you blow your breath out and then you go, ah, and that's how I get the breath out, I squeeze. But what happens here? Ah, look at that. Ah, 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 it's always the same. The, the, the best singers always were diaphragmatic singers. So I go, ah, 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 
Men om och kvinnor bara som var skärmen Är Sovjet va? Sovjet va? Du passar för mig ja! So you can, you can hammer like that all day long, you can squeeze all day long, and of course the more you do it, like any muscle, the more you exercise it, the stronger you get. Uh, it, it helps to have the right kind of voice for that. And uh, I had a sort of a medium-sized voice, and I could do that once in a while and make, and make an effect, you know? Uh, let's see. The phone, the phone, the phone. Uh, Alexa, stop. Anyway, so we would, there are all these different ways to sing, and they're all hard styles, and they all require a certain posture of the diaphragm. And that's the whole secret. If I do that, and I go, la, ah, look at that. Oh, now that's how I did a miniature cough. See, I'm doing a little pressure like that. La, now what can I sing that way? Just about anything. The question is, can you hear me? <laughs> right? What all I'm doing is going pre cough So this is what you would call hard styling, and it's all diaphragmatic, and the breathing is all in the lower back, and all the breath comes out of the back, up against the, the diaphragm, and as Tetrasini said, it's like leaning a ladder against the wall. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> I'll get rid of the film in a minute. <laughs> That's called bravura, because it's full voice, coloratura. If you want to back off and sing color true, you split those tones. Still doesn't change, right? If I split it again, I get. So that the, 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 the second one I did was coloratura, and the third one it was fioratura. So if I want a flowerly, do color it too. But look what's happening. See? These also, some of them uh, are affected, the, the placement of your voice is affected by this. And I, I thought maybe I'd make another video at some point about voice placement because they, they really do. If I go, what did I go? Now what happened here? See what happens here? I go. So when and when and if you you want to use these different um, let's just call them different phonations of the vowel. One is ah, one is oh, and there's everything in between, <laughs> right? I asked somebody, is this nasal? Ah, some say yes, and a couple of clever people said no. It's not nasal. Ah, it's not going through my nose. What it is is a shallow phonation. So I'm going, ah, and I can take that as far back and down as I want to. And the perfect tone in, in, in Italian history, as they described it, was chiaroscuro, clear, dark. So you're supposed to have a bright sound that is metallic. I mean, a metallic sound that is mellow, so I'm trying to say. Like, ah, that's ugly. A lot of people think you teach the ski slope and all. Get the tongue up and back. And the voice goes right there. Oh, it's got focus now. You sound like a, an opera singer. Well, that's not the kind of opera singer that I'd like to be. On the other hand, a lot of people sing too dark or they, they depress the tongue down. If the tongue goes down, you have to breathe it down. You can't depress it with muscles. So I breathe, I go. My tongue is soft and down in the back. What happened here? When I 
phonated that vowel, what Caruso said, it's far back and lower in the throat, he said. Well, how do I do that? <laughs> See? So this gives you um, a lot of artistic... Uh, possible variations and way to make colors and with the voice and things, but you also have the responsibility if you do that and you mustn't make wrong choices because you'll be singing way too heavy for a kind of music and uh, believe it or not, folks, the biggest tone is not always the one the public likes the most. You know, when I sang big tones, I, was, I used to do like that, but you know, People would, you know, so one of my colleagues said, why do you yell that section? And I said, oh God, I thought it was making a bigger noise. No, it just comes out as yelling. And uh, are you angry at her? Why are you yelling at her? And then, uh, you know, you're singing with, uh, you know, Madame Butterfly. She's only 15 years old. And you have to be careful. You don't want to sound like you're angry. And you don't want to scare her. So how do you sing that? See? So you have to decide. If I go, there it is, smile. Or Gilda goes, You don't need to make all these big big sounds all the time. You know, there are some big voices, but the most the most famous historical voices were the most beautiful ones. You know, when you think of great, great singers, uh, you can list off somebody who's a held in tenor, like Melchior, but you think, well, but Caruso was still the greatest singer. <laughs> Everybody says, I mean, you name up all these fantastic singers. I remember when the story of Leo Slezak, who was six foot nine, weighed 420 pounds, and Caruso went to hear him sing uh, Otello. And Caruso had already booked all the performances. He played a schedule. He learned his old set to her to perform it. And he heard Slezak sing it, and he canceled, Caruso canceled everything. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's why he, he was... His voice was the most beautiful. The one they raved about in uh, Germany all those years I spent there was Helge Roswanger. And I studied at Roswanger for a year and a half. But everybody, Lars Melchior said that Roswanger had the greatest voice he ever heard. So people were mad for him. They called him the Golden Sword, right? Um, but but he, he would do things like this. <laughs> the chimpanzee, see? <laughs> but look what happens when I do that. So when I say, so if I were a lawyer, I'd say, I rest my case. That should at least give you an idea that if you can get, if you can breathe in a way or do an exercise that takes all the tension out of here, like, um, so you say all the bells. Ah, A, E, O. Where are the vowels when I do that? I could open it. That's the one you like, or you find that the public likes it, or you're singing lighter, more lyric repertoire, and you should not be sound so beefy, right? I mean, at 85, you want to. Be young, feel young, and sound young, right? Ha ha ha! Doesn't sound young, it sounds like an old geezer yelling. <laughs> anyway, I hope that gives somebody an idea about hard style, and I'm gonna do another tape now called Soft Style, and we'll see what in the world is, <laughs> is different now about hard style and soft style. Well, we're gonna find out, aren't we? Okay? Okay, bye.